Hello, this is Mr. Undercoffler, and today we're looking at the guided notes called Writing Decimals as Fractions and Mixed Numbers. This is the opposite way of how we did problems on the previous guided notes when we were going from fractions to decimals. Now we're going the other way. We're going from decimals and turning them back into fractions or mixed numbers. Now, some of this you have already learned in previous years of math. You've learned that terminating decimals. Now, I'm going to stop right there. You might be like, what do you mean, Undercoffler, by a terminating decimal? The word terminate means to stop, like the movies, The Terminator, put a stop to stuff, okay? That's where that word comes from. Terminate means to stop. So terminating decimals are the decimals that stop. They don't go on forever. They don't repeat. They stop. And you have learned in previous years of math that decimals that terminate, that stop, they have denominators when you write them as fractions of 10 or maybe 100 or maybe 1,000 or maybe 10,000 and so on and so on and so on. What is the new part of today's lesson is when I start showing you how to write repeating decimals as fractions. When you write them as fractions, they will not have denominators of 10, 100, or 1,000, or 10,000. They will have denominators of 9, 99, 999, 9,999, and so on. I will show you what I mean coming up here shortly. Now, let's take a look at the directions. Write each decimal as a fraction or mixed number in simplest form. So here's what I did. I made a two-column chart. On the left are the terminating decimals, the decimals that stopped. They didn't go on forever. On the right, we have the repeating decimals. And you will hopefully then, once we're done with these notes, be able to have a nice compare and contrast type of chart helping you to see how terminating decimals are different when we write them as fractions from when we write repeating decimals as fractions. So let's focus starting with the part that is similar to what you learn in sixth grade math, the left-hand side, the terminating decimals, the decimals that stopped. Now, I know that some of these problems are already done for you. Number one, number five, those numbers, those problems on the far left, I know they're already done for you, but follow along with me. Since this 4 is in the tenths place value, it logically makes sense that as a fraction, it would be 4 tenths. In fact, that's why your elementary school teachers probably didn't allow you to pronounce the decimal as 0.4. Your elementary teachers probably made you call it 4 tenths, and I'm glad they did, because that directly leads to how you write it as a fraction. But don't stop there. I need you to remember how we reduce fractions. We look at the numerator, we look at the denominator, and we ask ourselves, do they have a greatest common factor that we could divide them both by? Other than one, because dividing by one is a waste of our time. We do have a greatest common factor of two. And guys, I want you all to realize even numbers are always divisible by two. Now, sometimes they're divisible by four or six or eight or 12 or whatever, but at the bare minimum, even numbers are always going to be divisible by two. So what I'm basically saying is don't you dare ever try to tell me that an even over an even is done in already simplest form. Because no way. Just, just, just no way. You can always reduce even numbers by two. And that's what I'm doing here. Now, be careful. Every year I see kids who want to get a little lazy in how they show their work. And they just want to put a big old divide by two and say, okay, that's good enough, it's not. It's actually mathematically wrong. Dividing, forgive me, I just did something wrong. Dividing a fraction by a whole number is not the same as dividing the numerator and the denominator by the same value. We'll talk more about that in a future lesson. All right, so four tenths divided by two over two gives us two fifths, and then we ask, can two and five have a greatest common factor other than one that we can divide them both by? No, that's already in simplest form. Same thing with number five, except number five is a little bit different. First of all, there is a digit to the left of the decimal point. No big deal. We're just going to make a mixed number. Now, we know the numerator is going to be 43. What's the denominator? Well, we look at our place values. Fours in the tenths, threes in the hundredths, and that's why it's two and 43 hundredths. Now, you might be like, Mr. Undercother, why didn't you reduce it? Well, because I couldn't. All the numbers that 100 are divisible by, 
things like 2, 5, 10, 20, 25, none of those numbers happen to be numbers that 43 is divisible by. So this was not able to reduce. But you always have to check and ask yourself if the numerator and denominator have a factor that they have in common that you could divide by and therefore reduce the fraction. All right, you can look at more examples. You can look at nine, you can look at 13. Again, I continue to play the place value game. Tenths, hundreds, thousands, boom. The threes and the thousands, so it's over 1,000. Tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. So this is two ten thousands. And then of course it reduces. There is a trick. The number, for those of you who like shortcuts, the number of digits to the right of the decimal point will be the number of zeros you put in the denominator. I don't know if you guys knew that before about these. So that's a cool little trick. Anyway, it is time for you to hit pause in the video, do two, do six, then also do 10 and 14. Hit pause in the video, do the remaining problems on the terminating decimal side of the chart. Don't do the repeating decimal side yet on the right. No, 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 no. Just finish the problems on the left side of the chart. Hit pause, do them now. Okay, I hope you already hit pause and you did 2, 6, 10, and 14. Let's see how you did. Number 2, it starts as 8 tenths, but don't you dare circle that. They're both even. They're both divisible by 2. This will reduce to 4 fifths. Number 6, did you put the 5 as a whole number? If you forgot it, quickly write it down. Now, this will be 18 over, let's see, tenths. Hundreds, the eight is in the hundred, so it's eighteen hundreds. Don't you dare circle that. They're not in simplest form because eighteen and one hundred are both divisible by two. Remember how I keep telling you even numbers are both divisible by two? Please don't ever forget that. Final answer five and nine fiftieths. Moving on, number ten. Did you throw the negative in front of the fraction? I hope you did. This is going to be, let's count the place values here. We have tenths, hundreds, thousands. So this should be negative 28 thousandths. Now, there's two places you can put the negative. You can put it in the numerator, or you could actually put it to the left of the fraction, kind of in front of the fraction. They actually will both be equivalent to each other. So I'm okay with you putting the, the negative in the numerator or to the left of the entire fraction. Either way will work. All right, where was I? Notice I didn't circle this, and you should know why. 28's even, 1,000's even. They're at least both divisible by two. But you might have figured out they're both divisible by four. That's the quickest way of reducing this. Now, if you reduce them both by two, you would have got 14 over 500. Forgive me, negative 14 over 500. And then you would have to reduce them both by two again and get negative seven over 250. Problem number 14, did you throw the 81 in front for the whole number part of the mixed number? What do we have? One, two, three, four digits to the right of the decimal point. Therefore, we need to have four zeros in the denominator, making it 10,000. So we have 612 ten thousands with the 81 as the whole number. Is that simplest form? No way is that simplest form. They are both divisible by two. Actually, they're both divisible by four. Now, if you did not realize they were both divisible by four, and you divided them both by 2, then you would have got 306 over um, 5,000, and then you'd have to reduce them both by 2 again to get what I have here, 81 and 153, 2,500 is the official way of pronouncing that. That was fun to say. All right, now it's time for the new part of this lesson. How do we write repeating decimals as fractions. We are now at the right side of the chart. As I explained early in this video, repeating decimals do not have denominators of 10 or 100 or 1,000. They're going to get denominators of 9 or 99 or 999 and so on. So here's what I mean. Point for repeating is not four tenths. It's not. It's four ninths. Likewise, 2 and 4 and 2.43 repeating is 2 and 43 90 ninths. So what am I doing here? Here's the trick. 
It's a really easy trick. The number of digits that repeat are the number of nines that you put in the denominator. So like on number seven, there's two digits repeating. So instead of going over just nine, it goes over 99. Another way of thinking of it is when the repeating digit is the only repeating digit and it's in the tenths, then the denominator is one less than 10, which is nine. Here it's in the hundred, so it's one less than 100, which is 99. So that's another way of thinking of it. But I find the easiest way of thinking of it is that the number of digits that repeat is the number of nines that you will put in the denominator. Notice the repeating bar does not go in the numerator. Guys, if you accidentally are about to put your repeating bars in your fractions, get them out of there. They do not belong. So, you can see more examples that I've typed up for you. Number 11, we have three digits repeating, so it goes over 999, three nines. Now, some of these will reduce. Both 123 and 999 are divisible by three. Now, how did I know that? Let me teach you a trick that you might have heard before. If you add the digits of the numbers together, like 123, 1 plus 2 plus 3. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6, right? If the sum of the digits, adding the digits, gives you something that's divisible by 3, then the original number is divisible by 3. I'll say that again. If the sum of the digits gives you an answer that's divisible by 3, then the original number is divisible by three. So here's what I mean. Take for example, 999. Nine plus nine is 18, plus nine is 27. 27 is divisible by three. Therefore, 999 is divisible by three. That's a cool little trick. All right, so anyway, 123 divided by three. I did this using what I call short division in my head. I said three goes into 12, four times and three goes into three one times. That was a cool little trick to figure out that that was going to be 41. So anyway, final answer, six and 41, 330 thirds. Problem number 15, there are four digits repeating, so it goes over four of the nines, 9,999. All right, now that I've led you through four problems on repeating decimals, it is time for you to hit pause in the video. You are going to do number four and number eight and number 12 and number 16. So those four problems on the far right side of the chart. Hit pause on the video, do four, eight, 12, and 16 right now on your own. Okay, I hope you have already done four, eight, 12, and 16 on your own. If not, you better hit pause now. Here I go, pencils and erasers ready. Let's see if you have these correct. 0.8 repeating is eight ninths. Remember, it's not eight tenths. Regular 0.8, terminating decimal 0.8, was 8 tenths, but 0.8 repeating is 8 ninths. Number 18, 5 and, or sorry, 5.18 repeating is 5 and 18 90 ninths. Now, I did not circle that. Both 18 and 99 are divisible by something. Do you recognize your multiples of 9 when you see them? You should know 18 is a multiple of 9. You should know 99 is a multiple of 9. Now, they also are both divisible by 3, but the quickest way of doing it is dividing them both by 9. If you divided them both by 3, you would have got 6 30 thirds, and then you would have to reduce them both by 3 again to get the 2 11ths. Always check to see if the numerator and the denominator have a common factor that you could divide them both by. That's what you got to do on each of these problems to make sure it's simplest form. Number 12, did you throw the negative sign up in the numerator or to the left of the fraction? Either way is acceptable. Since there were three digits that repeated, yes, zero was one of those digits, wasn't it? So one, two, three, three digits repeating. So this is over three nines, 999. And guys, 28, the numbers that 28 is divisible by, like two, four, seven, 999 is not divisible by any of those things. So this was already in simplest form. Number 16, did you throw the 81 to the left for the mixed number? Now, the numerator, I don't have to write the zero. I hope you guys know 0,612 is the same as just 612, but you do have to count the zero 
when you are counting how many digits repeat. One, two, three, four digits repeat. And therefore, my denominator should start as four nines, 9,999. Both of these numbers are divisible by three. Did you remember that little trick I taught you before? Add the digits, six plus one is seven, plus two is nine. That's divisible by three. Therefore, the entire number is divisible by three but they're also both divisible by nine. Let me introduce you to another trick. It's very similar to the three trick. If the sum of the digits gives you a multiple of nine, then the number is divisible by nine. So six plus one was seven plus two was nine, remember that? That's divisible by nine. Therefore, 612 is divisible by nine. These are awesome tricks to know, guys, let me tell you. So 612 divided by nine is 68. You might've had to go off to the side to figure that out with some long division. 9,999 divided by nine, that's really easy to do. You can do short division. Nine divided by nine is one. Nine divided by nine is one. Nine divided by nine is one and so on and so on. So that's why it's 1,111. That is simplest form. There is nothing that can divide into 68 that would also divide into 1,111 evenly other than dividing by one, which is a waste of your time. So that is in simplest form. If you need me to explain any of these things more than once, please realize you can hit rewind on the video and listen to an explanation more than one time. All right, now there is something I have to tell you to be completely 100% honest with you as a math teacher. The trick that I taught you for making repeating decimals become fractions, the nines trick, count how many digits to the right are repeating of the decimal point and that's how many nines you put in the denominator. That trick only works when every digit to the right of the decimal point happens to repeat. It does not work on a repeating decimal like this. Why? Because on this guy, 0.83, where the three repeats but the eight doesn't, since the eight doesn't repeat, the trick I taught you doesn't work. The trick I taught you would work with 0.83 repeating, where both the 8 and the 3 repeat, then that's 83 99ths. But if the 8 doesn't repeat, then the trick totally falls apart, doesn't work anymore. And there's a different way you would have to do it. It's a much more complicated algebraic way, which I am not going to be teaching you in this lesson. Your Algebra 1 teacher might teach it to you at some point in time later on in your life, but it is going to have to be saved for another day. Take my word for it, 0.83 repeating where the 8 does not repeat is actually 5 sixths. If you don't believe me, you could bust out your calculator and treat 5 sixths as a division problem. 5 divided by 6, and you would get 0.8333333333333, which proves to you that I wasn't lying. 0.83 where the 8 does not repeat is 5 sixths.